Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The dental clutch is an intraoral device that indexes the teeth. It permits us to assemble an extraoral device, such as a pantograph or a hinge axis locator, to these clutches for the purpose of recording mandibular movement. The clutch, dental clutch, has certain characteristics. As you will see here, we have a bearing area in the maxillary clutch, and you can see the area in which movement occurs, the gothic arch tracing that we have on here. We have a bearing area that is formed in the clutch. On the mandibular clutch, to provide a area of movement, and to separate the teeth so that the only area of contact is the central bearing screw that is formed in the clutch. So we have a bearing screw and a bearing area formed on the clutch. As we said, the clutch indexes the teeth. We have indentations of the teeth, slight indentations of the teeth, that we can key the clutch into the mouth And this should be just slight indentations of the teeth. And they should be stable against the teeth. Would you close, please? Now, the thing that holds the clutches together is the bearing surface or the bearing stud against the bearing surface. And the patient can move the jaw forward and back, forward and back and from side to side without the clutches touching. And then we have precision indexes here that we can use to attach the pantographic equipment. The ideal clutch comes out of the mouth when the patient opens. They're not locked into the in undercuts of the teeth. Would you open, please? Uh, the clutches come right out. The ideal clutch has a very thin area over the teeth. If you hold this up to light, you should actually see light coming through the indentations of the teeth. So it's thin over the occlusal surfaces of the teeth, and yet it's thick around this bearing screw and also thick over the bearing area. We'll now go into the procedure for construction of the clutch. The starting of the fabrication of the clutch, we start with a clutch frame. And this is a clutch frame that we buy from the manufacturer. And this helps form the clutch. This is the index, precision index part of the clutch and the uh, clutch frame. And then we have the two lateral wings. It is easier to have a set of study casts from the patient in aiding you in forming the uh, frame, clutch frame, what we'd like to do is to have the clutch frame just a little bit wider than the buccal surfaces of the teeth. As you can see here, we're just about pretty close on the uh, size of this clutch frame. These arms can be bent. This material is designed so that if you put a slow, constant pressure on it, you can form or you can bend these clutch frames. So we can put a slow constant force on here and bend the frame. In this case we needed to make it a little bit smaller so that it would fit closer to the teeth. Now we have it a little bit too close and we want to bend these out just a little bit. And that would be about the right distance between the teeth and the frame for the mandibular clutch. We need to do the same thing for the maxillary clutch. This fits fairly close. This is about right for the um, maxillary clutch. We have a little bit of space between the buccal surfaces of the teeth and the clutch frame. Now to hold the clutch frames in position while we add acrylic to these areas. We have a clutch jig that we place the clutch frame into. 
You notice that the jig is offset for the normal overjet and overbite of uh, the normal patient, where the anterior teeth are forward, further forward than the mandibular teeth. So we place the clutch frame into the clutch jig, and using the clutch frame and attaching the apparatus or the screws to the clutch frame, be sure to use a screw that engages the entire threads of the clutch frame so that you don't strip the thread. And make sure that the clutch frame is seated in the slot before we tighten up the uh, screw. And then we can tighten the screw rather rigorously without a fear of stripping the threads. To keep the acrylic from the two clutches from sticking together, we need the clutch die. The clutch die is a rubbery material that helps form the key parts of our, of our clutch. You can see on the maxillary part here, we have a concave area that is in the clutch die that will help form the central bearing area of the maxillary clutch. On the opposite side of the clutch die, we have a hole and this hole is for the placement of our central bearing stud. We have the central bearing stud with a head on it and the screws. The head of the screw goes into the hole and the threads are sticking out. We want the threads embedded in the acrylic so that we can adjust the height of the screw. So please put the head in the hole and have this, the thread sticking out. If you reverse it, then you can't adjust the screw. So we have the clutch die prepared, and we place this in the clutch jig, and that holds it in relationship to the clutch frame. Now we have a spacer, a small spacer that is available. If we need to reposition the clutch frames in relationship to each other, supposing we had a class two individual where the jaw is way back, we would want to put this clutch or this spacer in the lower clutch frame so that it would put the clutch back further because we want to maintain the relationship of this bearing screw to the bearing area in our clutch. We can now go ahead and put the lower clutch frame into the jig. We now have the assembled clutch frame, and we go to the patient now and try this in the mouth. Now it's important in placing this in the mouth that we have this anterior part of the jig coming straight out of the mouth. If you don't, your anterior bars will be off to one side or the other. So position this so that it comes straight out of the mouth. Then check to make sure that the clutch frames are not impinging upon the uh, gingival tissue of the patient. And the patient can close, open please. The patient should close somewhere back near centric relation. Open please. So practice with the patient and make sure that they can close back in that centric relation position. Okay, open. We're now ready to go ahead and act the, add the self-cure acrylic to form the rest of the clutch. We use a fast set acrylic for the normal individual, the normal size mouth. We use about a three-quarter portion scoop. We measure out three-quarters of a mix of powder. And then we use a measured three-quarter portion of our liquid. And we add the two together. It is well to have a bowl of warm water handy as we have here so that we can use that to control the set of our acrylic and also to help hold the acrylic in the crutch frame. The acrylic is, is uh, fluid and it would tend to run out of the clutch frame. Now it is nice to be able to put the acrylic in the clutch frame 
when it is fairly runny because we'd like a very detailed copy of the maxillary clutch with the bearing area. We'd like a nice smooth bearing area. So take about two-thirds of the material, pile it into the upper clutch, moisten your fingers, and then start distributing the acrylic out over the clutch. Remember that we want it thin over the incisal edges and the occlusal surfaces, and we want bulk over our bearing area. So we keep manipulating the acrylic until it's in that position. We can put this in the water, the buoyancy of the water. We'll keep it in the clutch frame while we go ahead and get the rest of the material out of the And we can go ahead and add this now to our mandibular part of the clutch. Again, making it thin over the teeth and thick over the central bearing area and the central bearing stud. Now, you don't want to put this in the mouth until we get some consistency to it. So we've got plenty of time to work with it. Keep thinning it out over the occlusal areas. Keep bulking it up over the central bearing areas. And we put it in the water to control the set. When we get the kind of a rubbery consistency to it, we go to the patient and try this in the mouth. We place it in the mouth against the teeth and then just have the patient close lightly into that material. Squeeze, open, close, squeeze, open. And what we would like is just slight indentations of the teeth in that clutch as we have here. We don't want big, deep indentations. Now we can go ahead and put this back in the water. And when this is about ready for its final set, we put it back in the mouth so that the patient is holding it firmly while we get the final set and we won't get warpage of the clutch. Now remember that this material gets hot. If it gets hot, the patient should let you know and you take it out of your mouth. As soon as the acrylic is set up, we can go ahead and disassemble the finished clutch out of the clutch jig because as soon as the acrylic is set up, it's hard enough to be able to uh, disassemble the clutches. Take the screws. Remove the jig and the parts of the clutch are separated. The first thing that we need to do is to open the central bearing stud approximately one turn. We would like about a millimeter of clearance between the upper and lower clutch when they're in the mouth. So we use the wrench and we open the central bearing stud one complete turn, which will give us about a millimeter of opening. And then we'd check for the stability of our clutch. With even the uh, slight indentations here, all we would need to have is a stable clutch. You don't need very deep indentations. So we put the clutch in the mouth, hold it against the teeth, rock it from side to side, and see if it is stable. Okay, close. Now the thing that keeps the clutches forward and back, I'll just keep it there. The thing that keeps the clutches in place is the bearing stud against the bearing surface and the indentations in the teeth. Now we'd like about a millimeter of clearance between the posterior parts of the clutch. And you can check this by putting carbon paper in there. Don't open, please. And having the patient move from side to side. Move forward and back. Now. What you say to the patient is important. If you tell the patient to rub, to rub the bearing screw against the surface, they can feel the rubbing. And if they feel the rubbing, they won't open. If you tell them to move, they might open their jaw. So tell the patient to rub forward. 
the patient can feel the rubbing and they'll keep the bearing in contact. Forward and back. Forward to this shoulder and back. Forward to this shoulder and back. And then we check the opposite side to make sure that we got the proper clearance. Now this side is a little bit tight. Would you move forward please? Rub forward, back. And mark that. Rub to each shoulder now please. And back. Okay, open. Now when they open, both clutches fall out. This is ideal because later on when you have the pantograph assembled, you would want these to come right out of the mouth. Now we need to go to the trimmer now and trim these areas. You can see here that we have a little bit of a, an area that is catching in the mouth. Rather than opening the stud any further, we want to trim this area down. Also check the area of your gothic arch to make sure that there's no obstruction in the way of our gothic arch. We could flatten this gothic arch out a little more with a acrylic burr to give us a nice smooth area. Also, make sure that you've got enough acrylic upon the front of these clutches. Remember, this frame can be bent by applying pressure. There should be enough acrylic upon there to make it solid enough so it doesn't move when we're taking the tracing. So we can now go ahead and trim these clutches. The trimming of the clutches is generally in the heel area where this acrylic bends over and a little bit in the central bearing area of the clutch. We now go back to the mouth, make sure that the patient can move freely on the clutches, and go through a slight or a small practice session with the patient. Close, please. Make sure that the clutches engage the indentations in the teeth. Now, you should get a firm grasp on the chin here with your hand and your finger for two purposes. One is to make sure that the patient maintains a light contact against the bearing surface and also to feel and encourage the patient to move along the border movements. So we will practice with the patient. Rub forward please and rub all the way back. Forward and all the way back. And then we tap the patient on the shoulder and have the patient rub to this shoulder. And we encourage the patient to move that way. Back and forward and back and then rub to this shoulder and back. Now you notice here the clutches as you're making the movement. If these are flopping around or moving then the clutch isn't stable but you notice how stable these are. Move to the rub to this side please. Notice that there's no movement of the clutches up and down. Back please. And then when we open the mouth, these should fall out. And even with just the slight indentations that we have here, these clutches are quite stable. If you want to practice the procedures that we've gone through today before you get to the patient, we have what we call articulator patient set up. We have the articulator set, and we have a set of uh, low-fusing metal casts on the articulator. You can use this just exactly as you way you would do the patient. If you want to practice a golf swing, you should go to the driving range rather than the golf course. And if you want to practice making clutches, you go to the um, articulator patient rather than going to the patient themselves. In order to make the clutches, you would remove the incisal pin area of the articulator so that we can work with the articulator the same way as we do the patient. We go ahead and adapt and assemble the clutch frames and the clutches the same way as we did for the patient, only they would fit the articulator. We would test them in the articulator so that they, we make sure that they fit and it closes into the clutch frames. Make sure that this comes out straight out of the, uh, the cast. And we're now ready to go ahead. We have our bearing screw in there. And we're now ready to go ahead and mix the quick cure acrylic and form our clutch.
about three quarters of a mix is sufficient again. And we mix this and apply it to the clutch frame exactly the same way as we do the patient. We want to put it on the clutch frame when it is fairly runny so that we can get a good indentation of the maxillary bearing surface. And yet we don't want to put it in the articulator until we get a doughy consistency. Now those models are made of low fusing metal. They melt at a relatively low temperature. If you put it in there too soon and you hold it there and the acrylic gets hot, you can melt the models. If you melt the models, you're going to be in serious trouble. So you have to learn how to control the acrylic more critically than you do in the mouth. When the acrylic has reached a doughy consistency, we do the same thing as we do in the mouth. We place the material in the patient, get a slight indentations of the teeth, and then we put it back in the water for the initial set. Just before the final set of the material, when we start losing the heat, we would put it back in the articulator and make sure we our clutch hasn't warped. So this procedure we do exactly the same way as we do in the mouth. And we now have our clutches for going ahead with the uh, rest of the procedure. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.